Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi everybody welcome to PMC 500 statistical reasoning in education in this video I'm going to explain to all of you regarding example of independent sample t-test I am Dr. Nur Asniza Isha or you can call me Dr. Ija in the previous video I have shown you the concept of independent sample t-test so in this video, I'm going to explain to all of you how we can conduct an analysis of independent sample t-test using SPSS by giving one example. So in this study, we are going to compare regarding the job stress among the employee. So a study was done to compare job stress between two employee groups known as lecturers and teachers where data were solicited from a randomly selected sample. So what we're going to do when we want to run an independent sample t-test using SPSS instead, first, we need to test whether the data is normally distributed or not. If yes, we can proceed with the test. Second, we need to state the null and alternative hypothesis. Third, does the scores of the dependent variable for both groups in the population have equal variance, where you need to explain your answer. The fourth step would be, what is your decision for this test? And finally, you need to state the conclusion based on your decision. So there are five steps that you need to follow in order for you to run an independent sample t-test. For this example, we have collected the data towards 30 samples from a group of lecture and also from a group of teachers. So from the data that gathered, we need to key in all the data into an SPSS. So here, the independent variable would be the employee, where we label number one for lecturers and number two for the teachers. And the dependent variable would be job stress, where it consists of the scores for the job stress test. After you have keyed in all the data into the SPSS, first thing that you need to do when you want to run an independent sample t-test is to test for the normality of the data. So in order to do this, you need to go to SPSS, you need to click Analyze, choose Descriptive Statistics, click on Explore, and it will open the dialog box for Explore where what you need to do first is you have to list which one is your dependent variables and which one is your independent variables. So in this example, the dependent variable would be job stress, whereas the independent variable would be the employee. So after you have key in the variable, please choose plot where it will open this box showing the descriptive, the box plot, as well as the normality plot with test and the spread versus level with level Levin test. So in order to find out the normality of the data, just click on normality plot with test. After that, click continue and click OK. So this would be the output of the normality test using numbers, which involve two types of tests, which are Kolmogorov or Smirnov as well as Shapiro wheel. So please take note that when will you use Shapiro wheel and when will you use Kolmogoro Smirnov? So you will use or you will read Shapiro wheel analysis when your sample is less than 50 and you will read Kolmogoro Smirnov for the test of normality when your sample is more than 50. In this case here, I'm going to look at the value of the P for Kolmogorov Smirnov. So the p-value or the significant value for lecturer and teacher as an independent variable is that the p-value is 0 0.200 for both lecturer and teacher. So this means that both of the p-value for lecturer and teacher is more than 0 0.05. So what does it mean if the p-value is more than 0 0.05? we can make a conclusion that the distribution of this data is normal or your data is normally distributed. So since 
The p-value for both lecturer and teacher are more than 0 0.05. Therefore, both of the distribution of the data is normally distributed. You can also support the normality test using numbers by looking at the graph. In this case, I'm going to use a QQ plot. So how do we read a QQ plot? By looking at the QQ plot, if the dots are near to the lines, it means that you have a linear pattern. So when points form a linear pattern, the distribution is normal. So looking at the QQ plot for lecturer and teacher, we can see that there is a normally distributed of data because of the linear pattern. After you have found out the normality of your data, second step is to state the null and alternative hypothesis. For this research, the null hypothesis would be there is no statistically significant difference in job stress between lecturers and teachers in the population. Whereas for the alternative hypothesis, there is a statistically significant difference in job stress between lecturers and teachers in the population. After you have stated the null and alternative hypothesis, the third step would be for you to uh, answer does the scores of the dependent variable for both groups in the population have equal variance? And after that, you can proceed with the fourth step for making a decision from the test that you have carried out. So how do we carry out an independent sample t-test using SPSS? You need to go to Analyze, click Compare Mean, and choose Independent Sample T-Test. So after you have choose Independent Sample T-Test, you will see this dialog box where you need to key in both the independent variable as well as the dependent variable. So again, the dependent variable would be the job stress, whereas the independent variable would be employee. So please take note that independent sample t-test involves two levels of the independent variable. So you need to define the group for your independent variables. So click on define group and you need to define one and also two. So in this case, one is for lecturers, two is for teachers. After that, just click continue and then you can click OK. So this would be the output of the data for the independent t-test analysis. The first table is the group statistics where it shows the number of samples, the mean, the standard deviation and also standard error mean. The second box or the second table would be independent sample test where first you need to read the Levine test for equality of variances in order for you to fulfill the third assumption which is equal variance assumed. So how do we read a Levine test for equality of variance? You look at the p-value or the significant value of the table. So here the p-value is 0.434 where it shows that the p-value is more than 0.05. So if the p-value is more than 0.05, in that, meaning that equal variances is assumed. So you have fulfilled the third assumption for independent sample t-test. So now you need to read the first row showing the equal variance assumed to read the t-test for equality of means. And again, you have to look at the p-value of the t-test, where the p-value here is 0 0.546. 0 0.546 means that the p-value is more than 0 0.05. So since it's more than 0 0.05, therefore, there is no significant difference of the data. So, I repeat, first, you need to read on the Levine test. The p-value is 0 0.434, which is more than 0 0.05. Therefore, the two groups have equal variance. Then, what is your decision of the test? You need to read on the p-value for the t-test for equal variance assumed row, where the p-value is 0.546, which is more than 0 0.05. Therefore, the null hypothesis is failed to reject. Hence, there is no significant difference in the mean job stress between the lecturers and teachers. 
So now you need to state the conclusion based on the decision. So the conclusion would be the finding indicated that employment status has no effect on employees' job stress. So how to write a report or the result using APA style? First, you need to mention about the mean and standard deviation. So an independent t-test was performed comparing the mean job stress between the two employee groups, lectures and teachers. The result revealed that the mean job stress of lecture, so now you need to state the mean, which is 22.8, and standard deviation 2.39, and teachers mean 22.1, standard deviation 2.69. And secondly, you need to report on the independent sample t-test, yeah, which show that the p-value is more than 0 0.05. So, from the t-test, we can say that there are significantly no di not different t18 referring to the degree of freedom equal to 0 0.615 referring to the value of t-test, where p is more than 0 0.05. So that's all for the lecture. Yeah, thank you very much. But before that, let me just show you how you can, how you can analyze using SPSS. Okay. So this is the sample of SPSS where we have keyed in all the data into the SPSS. So to do analysis on independent sample t-test, you go to Analyze, go to Compare Means, click Independent Sample T-Test, and then click Employee as your grouping variable. So define Group 1 and also Group 2, click Continue. And then click job stress into test variable. Go to option, leave it by default, and then you can click OK. So the output from the SPSS show the group statistics as well as the independent sample t-test. So we can see that the p-value for Levin test is more than 0 0.05. Therefore, equivalent assume, but for the t-test, the p-value is 0.709 which is more than 0 0.05, it shows that there is no significant mean difference between the two groups, which is the teachers and also the lecturers. So thank you very much for listening to my video. Hope you enjoy the video. Have a nice day. Goodbye.